Hi friends, so I'm working on a NeoPost Fomax DS or DI62 inserter folder that has two trays. You know, these things are sold under a whole bunch of different names for a whole lot more money than they're probably worth. So anyway, let's get into it. So the issue is that the tires were worn out on this. Now I got a half a good deal on it, so it was worth the gamble. I removed this cover, and I removed that cover, and I removed this cover, a cover here, and a cover there. So just machines a little bit apart. Um, I probably should have started taping this earlier, but you know it is what it is. So here's what nice clean ones look like. And it goes in like this, and with the covers out, it's actually pretty easy to do this. Although you still can't really see anything. And what you're aiming for is back in here. And this little shaft rotates. And that's what latches it in. So that one's done. So let's go ahead and put the lower cover back on. Now, whatever idiot designed this just has never had to actually work on it. Because it's a really asinine design for how these little covers go in here and are held. I still don't have a good feel for like, you know, what the hell they were thinking. All right, so that's approximately where that goes. It's held in. No, it goes on that. So there's a, a screw sticking out here. And that has to go up, at which point you gain access to this screw. And like I said, boys and girls, this is an asinine way to do this. If you were trying to design something in the most stupid way possible. Yep, this is a really good candidate for it. And it's still not in here. And I don't, I, I just, I, I don't understand why the cover, it goes in here like this. Whatever form of elegance they thought they were making. Clearly, are serviceable so this goes in here approximately like this but it needs to go back behind the screw yeah, let's just take the damn screw out This thing might slide in here at this point. like a Chinese mousetrap. Elegant is not the word that belongs in a sentence with this. Stupid. Stupid is the word that comes to mind. 
But, you know, all this equipment is not terribly well engineered and it's stupidly overpriced. Now, this was a Craigslist rescue. Alright, that looks about right. Except we're not far enough back. Just want to understand what it's hung up on. Oh, I think it goes on this upper one. There we go. Alright, so it goes on this upper screw, not the lower one. But we can put this back in now. Um, these are like twelve, thirteen thousand dollars new. It's just an obscene amount of money for this piece of equipment. Uh, I'm almost embarrassed to say what I picked it up for. Um, and the previous owner, uh, I'll share. I paid four hundred bucks for it, plus the drive to and from Dallas, which is a heck of a good deal. Because even on FleaBay, this would have been a thousand bucks, and it still wouldn't have worked worth shit. That would have had to have been shipped in. <sighs> so anyway refurbished these are two or three grand and if you do a lot of mailing they might actually be worth it so there are some screws on the sides that uh, do not use a uh, Phillips head like the rest of this They use, I don't know, whatever this is. It's probably Matrix, but it looks, it, it looks like a 930 seconds. Fits it. All right. So now we're going to put this cover back on. And it's held on with these two screws that go here and here. This pops down to be out of your way. That's your belt transport mechanism. So... And, you know, part of the reason this weighs 400 pounds is they're using 3 millimeter sheet metal. So, whatever. All right. Oops. And there probably is not a nice way to show this. So, sorry about the camera angle. You'll just have to deal with it. It's rated for a couple thousand pieces an hour. Yeah, I didn't have that experience with it, but I also had sorely worn feed rollers, and um, yeah, I, I guess I should have had more faith and started on this earlier. So anyway, the trick to this is you lift up and you push over To the side you push on this second feed wheel back here right. so of course that one's harder to get in and out so we'll get the lower one out first oh, you know this cover up here should come off but I hadn't quite figured out what releases it let me see if I can figure that out Yeah, those screws look like they would release it. So, there are screws up here. And I'm pretty sure that is what's holding this cover on. And without this cover, my life will get a lot simpler. Of course, that would go underneath the table. And there's one in the back. So, let me find it. 
find it and unscrew it. So once you have that off, there are also some little tabs that have to be pushed here and here. For all the good that did, at least now I can see what I'm fighting with. So I'm going to bring you guys up in here. What I really need is this off, but that looks like it's part of the machine frame. So, what we want to do, and we're actually going to call some screwdriver. So, I don't know if you guys can see here. What you're trying to do is compress this spring. Enough. I might be able to do it from the back side. So what you're trying to do is compress this spring over here and it lets you pull this whole roller assembly out and take it to the bench. Then what you actually need to do is compress it enough to disengage the shaft right there. come out as well. So we're going to take this out. And one of the charms of really shitty engineering is using a screw on one side and a bolt on the other. but we still can't get it to slide over. supposed to I think this is actually to pry on. Oh, let me get a different screwdriver all right so we're gonna try just encouraging it with a screwdriver usually this is not a good idea on equipment but let's see what's holding it On this side, that is in our way and has to come out. So let me figure out what size bit that is and get it out of there. So the bit is marked as a CR-VT20. So whatever the hell that is, I'm guessing it's a T20 Torx bit. Let me see if I can get you guys in here. So the problem is this little retaining finger is in the way. Okay, so just add 
add that to our collection of parts. Alright, so now, yeah, that's how easy it actually comes out once you remove the retaining clip. Now the bottom piece operates in the opposite direction, and it helps to have this all right, so the bottom one is down here, and it needs to go over, and then out, and there we are. So let's go to the bench, and I'll show you what we're doing. Okay, so let's start with this piece, because this is actually easy. So you pop this out, and then you pop that side out, and then this slides out, okay? Now, you need to remove this little clip and let me go get the screwdriver because that's the easiest way to do it. Alright, so let me set this here. Now, you need a flat tip screwdriver and you just want to pry up. But Murphy's Law says that the instant that you pry this, it's going to go off somewhere where you can't find it. So you need to use caution when you're doing this. And it will also stab you because all equipment is bloodthirsty. There we go. Now we need to find it. There it is. Because I'm sure whatever size the stupid thing is, isn't something I can easily get. Now, I brought an upholstery puller with me in a feeble attempt to... No, yep, that's not gonna work. So the other thing you can do is that. <sighs> Alright, now the original parts had a direction. The aftermarket roller does not. Now I got these from Clean, Clean Machine Mailing out of Dallas, Texas. They're probably... The guy that owns it's probably the most honest guy in this business that I've run into, and I've run into plenty of charlatans and shenanigans in the mailing machine space. What you don't want to do is you don't want to push on these. All right. So that's really all there is to that. Now, this is another opportunity for bad things, naughty things to happen but pliers are your friend and you want to work with gravity otherwise you'll find out how naughty gravity can be so it's just that easy to pop that together set this off to the side take the naughty bits and put them in the 10,000 year recycle bin now you need to do these and this is the same thing you just want to carefully pull on these to get them out And then we'll send them to landfill, aka 10,000 year recycle. And then we will install these. All right, so those are on. That looks easy enough, doesn't it? So now take this. And remember, this goes on that side, but first, you want to apply just a dab of grease. I'm using Ultra Lube. And we'll set the left side, set the right side. And then we'll use a super paper towel to remove the excess grease and set that aside. All right, now for this bad boy. Okay, so first things first, do not remove this circlip. Again, do not remove this circlip. If you do, there's a little spring in here that'll pop out immediately. 
If you do, just take a deep breath, grab yourself a beer, beverage, and put it back together. And the way you put it back together is actually by using this to twist it. So I'm not going to do that because I already did it once. That's all there is to it. Send that to recycle. Now, I realize you're looking at this going, hey, wait, that doesn't fit. It's rubber. It'll stretch. It fits. And there you go. That one's not that bad, but you can see that this is worn smooth, and this one's not. That's the old one that was on the other one, and you can see it's completely worthless. So, you know, this isn't really this hard, but if you're intimidated by machines, by all means, call a technician because there's a whole lot of cussing available in this assembly. Yeah, and that needs to get out a little more. There, that's how that should be. It should be snug against there. There's just a whole lot of cussing available in this. So now let's go put it back together. Okay, so first things first, we need to get this in here. I'm not really sure. Oh, this goes up in here. All right, so that looks nice. I don't know where that's supposed to actually go. Yeah, fun, fun. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this up in here. And then there's a socket. Well, not a socket. Yeah, actually there is. There's a socket on the left that this sort of snaps into. There you go. And the wheel will move smoothly once it's in there. So, before we go any further, the next thing we want to do is replace this. Now, you probably should use manual tools, but these are not very sophisticated, so I'm using... Let's see where to come from. Mystery deepens. That one's loose. Oh, yeah, that was on the upper one. Okay. That's awesome. But it's interesting. I shouldn't have been able to get the other one out. So, at any rate, this goes in here. And we'll look at the other one for reference. Yep, it goes like this. No, it goes like that. All right. So... going to insert this side first. And then over here, just like that. Boom. Done. Now, we'll come back over and we need to get this in place and this fits in here just like that sorry guys this is really hard to do in the first place it's even harder to do it for YouTube Alright, 
let me point out what I'm doing. So it screws into a threaded tap there, and this little locking tab goes in down there. things first is this. So these two That goes there like that. And then on the left, there's a screwdriver. I actually don't even think that screw does anything actually held in on this side by what's probably a five or six millimeter that I'm abusing. So before we go there, we're going to go here. I have to admit, this is much easier to work on with... Okay, so... Alright, so that's kind of the secret is it pulls over right here. It hangs on those two screws. And then there's one screw on the right that's got a nut driver on it. Here, somebody has adjusted this machine with less pressure, and I don't think that's right, so we're going to move it. Yeah, I want a lot more downforce than it had, um, so it grabs the paper. So that's what I've done. Next, we're going to reinstall this.
So we're going to get this installed and it's not quite in the right position so we'll start with that. Let's see if that got us there. At this point, we have everything back together. Now what we need to do is put the covers on. So I will start with the cover in front because it's the easiest. And it just slides in here like this. Oh, before I do. issue with this nut down here. Do not over tighten these because they will strip very easily. On this part here, um, we've got the clutch set pretty light on these. This goes back in its little pouch. That buttons up. Now we get to do the It is what it is.
screw back in so this cover's got to come back off. right there. back in. Okay. So part of the refurbishment here is replacing these brushes. You can see these are stiff and nasty and these are soft and flexible. So, yeah, you can see that that's just not gonna do a very good job. And these just pop out. And then we've got one more piece that we need to mess with. So, this is pretty disgusting. So, we'll take that out, slide that back in, and then we'll go work on this. Actually, we'll work on here. So, let's just set all this off to the side. And then we will start here. Thank you. 
so then we're just going to come in here like that and like this that's it voila pull this back here and it just goes in like that and voila it's nice and fresh it might actually work now so I'm using some sealing fluid that I bought on Amazon. It goes by the name of Ideal Seal. I'm sure it's nothing magical. And we're going to use it to fill it to the max. Give that a minute to wick up into the media. We'll add a little more. It's just amazing that it took that much, but it did, and that's fine. So, this stuff was like $8 for four bottles of it or something, it was cheap. I'll probably buy it concentrated in the future because I have deionized water available. So, um, I'm going to give it a, it needs some time to wick up into here, and then we'll give it some, a test. So, alright, let's see if it works. Yeah, not quite so fast. Stuck envelope. Alright, it thinks one of these is not loaded. So, so there's a little clip that that should be on like that and so I gotta figure out how to fix that all right so I'm gonna move that so I think the easiest thing to do is just use a screwdriver to push this back So, the other naughty way to do this is with this. Still needs to come out a little bit. 
means I've got to take this whole side apart to get to that again.
Alexa weather. Okay, so the trick to this is when you're inserting this, there's a slot in the side here for that stupid little tap to fold into. So you put that in there, and you pull this back, and you rotate this, 
until it will slide in. And then you just carefully slide that over and make sure it's latched. And I must have just gotten lucky with it last time. So here we are. Actually, it's cleverly engineered, it's just not, it's not designed to be worked on, and that's irritating because this is something that has to be worked on. And it doesn't have to be this difficult. shouldn't be this difficult. There's no reason for it other than piss poor engineering by someone who's never had to work on it and is more concerned with cost and the ease of manufacture than they are with actual serviceability. Alright, now for another couple of very poorly placed screws that should have been on the top of this where they would have been easy to access, but it wouldn't have been pretty. cover with a focus on aesthetics, not function. And that's why it's Italian, not German. A German machine would be easy to work on and well designed. small changes in the way this is designed would have made this much easier to deal with. This is very likely put together upside down and then some sub-assembly is bolted to it. Okay. Yep, just that easily, I stripped out that stupid screw. Wow, that's irritating. These should be criminal to install on equipment. Yep, I stripped both of them out.
So we got it back together. We're going to try and run it. All right. So I had an issue with envelopes not opening. And what I discovered is there is a plate here that opens the flap. And it just wasn't high enough. So I got in here and adjusted it higher. And you can move this manually. So we're going to run it and see what happens now. Clear all this stuff out of the way. And let's see. Reset. So documents and things are over here. Silly. Okay, remove envelope. Why does it want the envelope removed? out of documents let me stop and do it again all right so I've just got some uh, plain paper in here okay that did not sound good oh yeah that's because it took all of the paper at once that was not nice let me all right try again Very not nice. It took all of the stack of paper. All right, try again. That was unprinted paper, so that could have had something to do with it. Touchy. The paper again. I don't know why it's doing that. That's new. All right, so I got some other issues to. I gotta print some more copies to to run in here. All right. I think I got it fixed. I adjusted the tension back like I found it on that second feeder because that's where the problem's coming from. Add that to the stack. Hit go. same time anymore. All right, well, we'll deal with that in a minute. That's all about it's not wanting to do anything now, so we'll turn it off. We'll reboot it.
got a feed problem we got to solve. All right, so I got it working. Um, the issue was this middle belt had somehow managed to flip around. So anyway, um, seeing as I've got this jammed open, I'm gonna let you guys see how the actual insert works. I'm just uh, doing some testing on position at this point. set so it looks like it's working and the position's right so this is tomorrow's project is to uh, run this mailer I've got a thousand pieces to run through it tomorrow thanks for watching all right so I got it working um, the issue was this middle belt had somehow managed to flip around so anyway um, seeing as I've got this jammed open I'm gonna let you guys see how the actual insert works there you go. So I'm just uh, doing some testing on position at this point. set so it looks like it's working and the position's right so this is tomorrow's project is to uh, run this mailer I've got a thousand pieces to run through it tomorrow thanks for watching